Welcome, everybody, back to ForerunnerSound.com. I have the wonderful privilege, again, to be with Dr. Rennie this afternoon, coming off the Portland conference we had here about two weeks ago, which was phenomenal, by the way. In January 12th through the 14th, he will be back in Portland um, in the new year. I, I can't stress enough, people, you must, you must make time for this. People that have left here, I heard comments like this, Dr. Rennie, as people are getting there for it. I feel like I'm leaving something in Oregon that I have to return back to. I mean, that was a reoccurring theme. They just go, that was something else. The stuff that was brought to the um, the conference was something fresh and new that is uh, coming to the church. And I believe that one of the greatest people that I know that understands the very uh, realm of God in the glory realm is Dr. Rennie and Marina McLean. There is, I don't know of anybody else. Anyway, I'm still buzzing. People are still buzzing. In fact, people are now gathering just to let you know, for those that are watching this and didn't get to the first conference, people are already gathering other people to come to the second one here in January. So it's it's something that you must be in the presence of in order to grasp the fullness of what he is saying and what she is saying. So I'm highly encouraged and we'll get information out. I currently have a, a conference button there on forerunnersound.com and watch that tab for the details. Um, it will be unfolding here in the next couple of weeks to get you all uh, signed up and ready for this conference. Okay, because mm -hmm. it was phenomenal, people. I'm just telling you. I'm just straight oh. shooting. I know you guys may say, well, you're biased, but I'm not biased because I know when I hear God, I'm not biased. I hear God. And Dr. Rennie, Dr. Marina, they brought the voice of God. So again, I just want to say thank you for the time that you guys spent to carve out to come here and coming here again so soon in January is just a powerful thing to do. So, and I know you're very um, in high demand all over the this nation and around the world. So um, it's kind of a, it's a special if I can say a special um, privilege to have you as frequently as we do. So that being said, Dr. Rennie, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess the first thing I'll say, what did you feel here in Portland when you were here? We're, we, we, we are definitely in the beginning of something fresh, something new and something different. Mm -hmm. um, the people were very, I have to say, frankly, the people were real. Mm -hmm. The people were wonderful. I, I still even remember some of their names. I remember the people who came from Wyoming, mm -hmm. Brother Walton. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, you know, uh, Robert and these people. I mean, I remember them. So that's got to tell you something. Yeah. Uh, and the children and that. But um, what, I, what I left with after traveling the world for so many years and seeing all kinds of things, the, the best way I could describe it is it was a new frontier. Hmm. It was a new frontier because, because people clearly, people got answers to why things are what they are. Yes. And so it shifted them and it gave them God's perspective mm -hmm. of faith, his glory and his presence. Mm -hmm. And really, I think people got a hold of faith now, the real purpose of faith from a completely different perspective. I, I mean, I, it's funny. I'm saying things about faith now, Dr. Barry, that I remember I only mentioned 30 something years ago and I never went into it because the truth be told, the church had no appetite for it because faith back then and even now, you will always hear the faith in the context of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will never hear faith in the context of presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, what got me very when I was in, Portland, Oregon, is that the people really understood the presence mm -hmm. and faith. Mm -hmm. and I, I mean, it was good. yeah, I, I, just the fact that you said, and you know, I've said this many times in our interviews, the fact that you've been carrying this word for decades. Mm -hmm. If I can say it this way, it's may, it maybe it's a very poor analogy, but. It's like this new wine of God that got poured into you 30 years ago <laughs> has been sitting in this barrel of revelation that mm -hmm. nobody's placed a demand to drink on from. And mm -hmm. finally, you have a company of people that are drawing from the value of what God gave you 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I know God. God doesn't take away from something when he gives you a revelation. It always will increase. It will always multiply. Yes. Even though nobody's hearing it at the time, it's not losing its value. It's actually increasing. It's increasing, Yes. And I believe, I believe the, the vibrance of what you are carrying has only increased the last 30 years inside of you. It's just never had the privilege to be tapped on. 
And I, mm -hmm. I think that's that's a powerful statement to understand that so that people that are watching this understand this is just not something you're, you're going to get at an ordinary Sunday church service. It's just not going to happen. I, 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 I Let me put it to you this way. If it would happen, I, I'm hungry enough, I would have found it. And the only place I found it is what you guys are carrying. That's that's, well, but that's my perspective. That's from my point of view. There are probably other people, but man, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know because I've run in enough circles I can catch up, pick up stuff pretty, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, people, you've got to understand the reality of what Dr. Rennie just said there, just in the aspect of faith and in the presence and the glory versus faith in things. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a that's a that's a subject right there. And you you touched on it so um, powerfully and taught it. Mm -hmm. You know, you touch it. You taught on it in mm -hmm. the Portland conference. I'm I'm telling everybody you got to be there in January. So yeah. that being said, stepping into the further uh, unfolding of your book, Eternity Invading Time, the chapter that we're in is is um, called um, Knowing the Realm, which I think is what you brought out so powerfully here in Portland. Mm -hmm. Knowing the realm of faith, faith to faith and glory to glory, faith mirrors glory glory and faith. I mean, that was just absolutely yeah. brilliant. I mean, cool. it's just brilliant. I, that's all I got to say. It was brilliant. <laughs> so that that understanding. So I think we're going to go ahead and let some people um, get a little, little more understanding just from what is written in the book here, because it yeah. kind of parallels what's happening here. Because in, in, when the, in chapter 15, it talks about, <clears throat> excuse me, it talks about Habakkuk 2.14. And it's a, you know, it's, it's the scripture we're all familiar with. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, and the, as the waters cover the sea. Now we've heard that a bazillion times, people. We don't have a clue what that meant. We just said it because it was a Christian thing to say. <clears throat> but now, as we're stepping into this reality of the glory, now mm. it becomes pertinent. It yes. becomes real because somebody's is placed a has a hunger. They placed a demand a, onto the understanding of this yes. realm. So mm -hmm. one of the things that you <clears throat> mentioned is, you know, the difference between, well, you talk not the difference, but how they parallel or they kiss each other is, is faith and yeah. glory. Yeah. And one of the things that you say in the chapter there, 15, is about knowing these realms, the difference between the faith realm yes. and the glory realm. Yeah. One, one has time involved, the other one doesn't. Right. And so it's not that you, if you're looking for the miraculous, Mm -hmm. you can use either one, but one requires exercise of you. The other yes. one doesn't. Exactly. So exactly. moving, I know we don't have a lot of time to unpackage faith in the glory, but so what is, what is the difference between the faith when somebody has faith to work for the miraculous versus mm -hmm. somebody that has understanding of the knowledge of the glory? How does that work? Because I think so many people, you, as you said in previous interviews, we understand faith, or we thought we understood faith, I should put it that way, for things. But yeah. we've never tied it to the value of who he is. Yes, and that's the, and that, that right there is everything. I mean, it, it, when you reduce faith to a thing, you've devalued it. Mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. and, and, and today, that's why people are bankrupt in faith, because it's been devalued so many times. Because almost every time when faith is taught, it is taught around things. It's never taught. First of all, faith is never taught as a person. Yeah. See, we say God is love. Right. God is peace. Well, he is faith. Jesus is faith. Mm -hmm. Looking at Jesus, who is what? The author oh. and the finisher of faith. Faith is a person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so powerful. It's so much. It's just so much. So, it's, go ahead. It's it's just so much. And so now, when we say now that the time element in faith, anything that comes through man is going to have a time element to it, mm -hmm. unless he is a hundred percent synchronized with the heavens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're going to find out that there is a time delay see when the fall took place it caused time delay that's why the our father prayer is on earth as it is mm -hmm. nothing can be on the earth before it was in heaven so that means the earth in the present tense is not in a present heavenly reality right wow 
You see what I mean? Oh, totally. And so the so the earth is always catching up, and the earth is setting time. And so, in other words, in other words, time is always catching up mm-hmm. because time is not complete. Mm-hmm. And so, time time is what I love to say is time is a living thing. Like how God created everything, time is a thing. And so, if the truth be told, we are people of eternity, but yet because of the fall, we now serve time. Mm-hmm. When in reality, it's the reverse that's meant to be the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When in eternity and in eternity and from eternity, time serves us. So where you are determines how you speak and how you see a thing. And so I think I might have said this to you before. I learned some years ago that in Hebrew, um, there, if I remember rightly, in Hebrew, did you know that there is no now? Mm. There's actually no now. That's why when God came and said, I am, number one, he was introducing himself, as we know, but he was also filling in a tense that the Jews don't have. That's why if you look in the Bible, if you look into particularly the Old Testament, what you're going to see a lot of is history and genealogy. Gene, who begot who, who begot right. who. Right. And then it talks about what is to come. Well, between what is to come and what has been is one dimension. Mm-hmm. Now. Mm-hmm. And now is where the supernatural fits. Mm -hmm. It's where it manifests. Mm -hmm. And so we're always looking to the future, but yet we need something now. Mm -hmm. And so the faith of his presence is different to the faith of you because the faith of his presence is the here and now of God. So good. You see what I'm trying to say? Oh, totally of you it takes time because you're putting the time for when a thing is to be Mm -hmm. so good so 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 one of the things you say is like when the glory is present it removes the stress from preaching yes because see if i hear you right what you're saying there and what you said also written in the book here is that when you're laboring in time you have to work the word, if I can say it that, you work the faith yes. of what you know. You've got to work it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. In, in, other, in other words, faith and power is exertion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the glory is not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it's totally, it's totally oh. manifesting from a, a place of of who he is, which is rest. We 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 move our being from rest. Most people are laboring to get into it. Exactly. And exactly. I think, and I just to throw this thought out, I think a lot of people have a, a misconception of God that it requires death to get to rest. <laughs> and I'm just going, nah, yes. uh uh-uh. uh. You you you've been taught something that's outside the realm of who he is because God doesn't need. This is how I think, Dr. Rennie. God doesn't need a fallen cherub who is called Lucifer, who became Satan, to kill you to get into his rest. How dumb is that? That is the yep. dumbest thing. So I... it's just like going back to this realm, though, um, as the scripture was saying, as the earth shall be covered, filled with the knowledge of the glory, the knowledge of the glory, the knowledge of the glory, the knowledge. See, people yeah. don't know. And so they only, they only work what they know. And since we've been work, we work faith for a thing rather than faith to be closer to him. That's the bottom line. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so powerful. It's just like, it, 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 it's just, a, it, it just shifts. Everything shifts. I remember uh, years ago when you spoke at ILC and I'm, this may be somewhat of a, a realm understanding. So I'm trying to bring this reality to how I, you taught <clears throat> over, above and beyond. Yes. And I remember when, uh, like the children of Israel were trying to cross through the Red Sea. So they go over to the other side, but yes. they're on the same playing field still as all where all the enemies are. So all you've yes. done is you jumped over something, one obstacle to only still have the enemy there. 
But right. then, then you bring it to this reality above. If you're above that realm, yes. then you have, you know, anything that's under your feet, you can subdue it. Amen. Then there's okay. this thing called beyond. Yeah. And it's 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 kind of like this jump from working your faith to the anointing to the glory. And yes. I, if I, I say it in this perspective because I want people to understand there are realms of God of understanding where you work from is what you have knowledge of. Undiscovered yes. truth is still truth. Right, 100%. And so if you don't have a knowledge of a truth that's unknown, that doesn't mean it's not true. It means you haven't discovered it or you don't have any knowledge of it. And so there's, right. there's this, this whole perspective of, you know, I've, I've arrived when I've got enough faith, I can finally, finally, I can do something. Yes. Which in, in, at that realm, yes, you can have small faith, you can have great faith, you can have no faith. I mean, you it, it just has, because you're in that realm. Yes. Yeah. But the expression of what you've brought to the earth and one of you, obviously the stewarding of the glory of what you and your wife have done over the last many decades is I, I believe it's finally going to br bring a reality. And it's not that you haven't done this. I, you, you always refer to what happened in, in London and all the great things as it started. But I think mm -hmm. that as any good fruit, it will produce a seed that goes out even further and you'll see more of it. It'll be a more of a, exponential increase of the manifestations because there's going to be more people that have a knowledge of it well let, so, me, say, well, let me say to you dr barry um i have some beautiful children of the gospel um from taiwan mm. um dr philip and dr marsha chan and um all i can tell you is it's a long story short that god is in in the month of september We've been teaching what I what I've been what you hear me say. We've mm -hmm. been teaching them because we put our book Eternity in Baby Time into the Mandarin language. Mm -hmm. And I tell you something: we, it, when I started um, ministering back there frequently again, from from September to the first week of October, we've had three to four resurrections. Wow! Yeah, see, they are, they are coming into this realm. So, you know, so when you say it's getting greater, yeah, it's going to be. Because what we're talking about right now, the truth is people don't have the knowledge. Because it's not conventional knowledge. It's revelation knowledge. And that's what the church doesn't really have, have an understanding of, is real revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. Revelation knowledge brings you into manifestation. And that's what the church is missing, is revelation. Because there's no revelation without there being a, manifestation correct <clears throat> one of the things that you brought up in the conference here was uh, i believe it was uh, you were talking about because we're hearing this quite a bit we need to bring back we got a revival we got to we got to get for, back to the revival so we can get to reformation yeah. yet yet the reality is when you revive it means return back re means return to go backwards or go yes. back yes 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 and the glory is not, there's no revival in the glory because in the glory, it's always something new. hundred so percent. That's something, there's a lot of people who I know, I wish to God, I, I, I'm careful what I say because I can tell if they don't know what they're saying. Anytime I hear the language of revival, mm -hmm. and they, you know what's funny about it? Even when you use the term revival, relating to faith, relating to the glory. Now, it's very interesting. Um, how do you revive the now? It's now. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? really well you, said. Yeah, you, you, you can do that. What you have to do is step into what it is now, because what it was is not what it is. Right, right, right. I mean, that's if, if people could just grasp that reality, because here's, here's the, here's, I, I, mean, I, I can, I've heard this, so I have the right to say it. People are saying we got to have revival so we can get to reformation. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, no, that's, that's not it. That's not it. Yeah. And I, yeah. I and that's all they've been taught though. That's all they know. We got to yeah. go back to revive to what was you know up to yeah. speed so we can get reformation back into society. Yeah. And the reality is, I, 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 I don't think I don't think going backwards is the way to go forward. <laughs> I don't think God thinks no, that no, way. Because, no, because that's a regression. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's a regression. That's a good, and for you to regress, to, and for you to have a regression, it tells me 
that you don't have a revelation of the now activity of God. That's really what that is saying. That's exactly what right. That so then you prophesy out of your moment, trying to get it to come exactly. somewhere in the future. So exactly. you, not only have you talked about what's in the past, now you're projecting something into the future. You still don't have what God wants to do in that moment. Well, we'll put it, let me, let me give an example. Um, oh, a lot of us, let me give you a simple example. Um, when Jesus came, we all know the simple truth that John should have went with Jesus. We know that because he was mm -hmm. the last of the old covenant prophets. Okay, yeah. well, there's a difference. Okay, Jesus was the now. John stayed in the past. Mm -hmm. That's really what that am amounts to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He stayed in the past because he, 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 it's what we know in a moment is, is different to what we're actually going to consciously live. John knew who he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, no question. He prophesied and whatever. But the scary thing is, is that John didn't walk into that now. He chose to go back. And I don't know how a person can go back when the now has come. So good. Yeah. And, and then they'll cover it up with language. I must decrease so he can increase. Reality yes. is God doesn't need any of your decreasing to prove the increase of who he is. That, right. that yes. lingo right there, people use yes. that and they belittle themselves to say, I got to increase God. However you move that in your mind, God yes. doesn't need you to increase him by you being little. I mean, you know, yes. it's just like, right. no, if he's the vine and we're the branch, we're not decreasing and trying to die <laughs> off the, the branch, or the vine to become a stick. No, we're, we're yeah. as he is, so are we. So as he is, so are we in this world. So, you know, that's such a powerful, powerful point right there. John should have kept on going, but then see, it got all messed up. That's a, um, I've never heard it put that way for as far as John, even though Jesus gave him, he's the greatest prophet of, of all. Of yeah. the he gave, and amen. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Amen. But that tells me that you can actually prophesy the coming move of God and miss the movement of it. Yes, and not embrace it yourself. Yes. Yeah. And yes. so that, because see, that brings up a whole nother thing, Dr. Ray. If I, I'll just touch it very lightly, but it appears to me, you know, if I understand the value of what's being said and what we've been laboring, trying to getting this out to people, time is something that God proves that he's outside of by prophesying into it. He can tell you something's coming before it even arrives. Amen. Of course. I get yeah. that. Yes. But the irony of it is, is that the more you prophetically say things, things, time keeps going like this. It keeps getting, it, it's shutting down because glory exactly. is coming. That doesn't need time for the value of what time is to make the manifestation of, it doesn't need time. It's Amen. God. It's God. Amen. It's Amen. God, people. And that's what, what's so powerful is you don't prophesy because you don't have uh, uh, something in the now of God, but you actually understand the now of God, and it actually begins to collapse time into the fullness of what God is, rather than trying to get out of a moment of time, putting the the the, the event down the street, because we don't know how to do it now. I hope right. people are hearing what I'm saying. I love the prophetic. The testimony of Jesus Christ, I can hear people, well, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And I love the prophetic. But yeah. I've also seen it mostly used from a stage where, because I can't get God now, I'm going to put him down the street. Yes, that's how it's used to be. And if, if, <laughs> if I kept making an appointment with God and he never showed up, you would quit, you would quit following God. I hear you. That's good. That's good. That's, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a reality that we've done. I think in some of the prophetic moves is because people are still waiting for that one moment. And they used faith for the thing that they heard rather than the invitation to become as he is. Bottom line, I believe that. I totally believe that. Amen. So the, exactly. the, 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 um, uh, I, you know, it's, there's just so much here, Dr. Rennie. It's just so, it's so powerful. I think you have said so many things already and the value of what was also said in this, um, in, in, in these realms that a lot of people I think we've mentioned already is that faith seems to be the trump card because we knew 
like you said, faith is a muscle. We've exercised it. We're strong in that arena. Yeah. Because we know how to work it. Yes. But the realm of glory is not understood. But see, like we said, the, the realm of glory doesn't require that muscle. Amen. To work that thing. So, you know, um, <laughs> I think there's a place though, and you, when you were here in Portland years ago teaching at uh, ILC, there's a place in the glory, or I should the, the the place in the glory, the enemy can't get there, and th that's a powerful thing to understand that, because if you situate your, and center yourself in that glory realm, the the enemy, a fallen cherub, can't enter into that. Amen. 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 I mean, I, it, it, uh, I don't know how to say this. A lot of unnecessary warfare has taken place in the minds of people that have been in this arena for so long because they failed to stand in the glory because they're playing in a realm that's just getting over. It's not getting yes. above and beyond. Amen. Amen. And so there's, there's these stages, I believe, that people have missed. <laughs> it's like the children of Israel. They, they get on the other side. They, they thank God for the miracle. But you're oh, yeah. still on the playing field of the enemy. Amen. That's true. And I think there's things that we huff and puff about. I think you said here in the in the chapter, you're talking about you got a lot of people huffing and puffing and fighting things on faith when you could be just standing in the glory of who he is. Amen. And the enemy can't get you there. At all. At all. At all. At, at all. So um if I was gonna be and, and maybe we can start closing this down. If I was going to say, okay, Dr. Rennie, I'm brand new Christian. Mm -hmm. This is kind of, people won't ask this question because they've been in Christians for years and they think, well, what's the steps to get to the glory? I mean, if I was brand new, how, what would be the process of getting into this reality, which God made man from man is made from the glory. He wasn't made from right. faith. Right. I think that's a big statement right there. Oh, hundred percent. Because if God, if I say, if, if we believe that we're made from his glory, that means he was intimate with the value of what he made us to become. He didn't faith us into existence. Amen. Amen. He, from the glory of him, he created and was intimate with us. That's what, what was, the, what, that's what this is all about. Amen. But if you're, if you're going to be somebody that's brand new to understand the value of who and the glory of God, then how would you, what would be the process of you? shaping their mind to the reality of who he is in his mind what would be that as far as getting into the fullness of the glory what would be the process there this, this, this is what i hear i hear corinthians second corinthians four i think it's not i think of this free i hear it loud and clear if any man be in christ mm -hmm. number one two He's a new creature. Mm -hmm. Three, all things have passed away. And behold, and we behold from the word. Only in, only in the word and from the word do we see a new creation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that verse is the process of you. For sure. Um there are things that I think people will glean from this and understanding. It. And if if I'm hearing, if I want to get people to hear this right, you have to be in the environment of who he is in order to grow the seed of who he is in you. Amen. Amen. And whatever you're, what are you, what, whatever it takes to cultivate that arena, mm -hmm. that's what you need to do. Amen. You need to pay the price to get where that environment is conducive to the seed that's in you. Because I think there's a transition coming. God's not going to do good things. Excuse me. God doesn't, doesn't honor things from the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he Amen. honors good that comes from the glory. Amen. Yes. Those are two different things there. Very Jesus, much. I think Jesus brought that out very powerfully. So anyway, Amen. I think that's, that's plenty for a, a minute for people to that's grab a, a hold of. That's a lot for people to grab a hold of. But yes, we'll it. do this again sometime next week. Let's do it again. And um, again, I'm just going to tell everybody, January 12th through the 14th, 2023, Dr. Marina, Dr. Rennie will be here again in Portland, Oregon. People, I can't stress it. Man, I spent 
tens of thousands of thousands of dollars back from 1993, 95, it was probably 95 forward to gather knowledge of what I now know. I, I just was all in. Mm -hmm. And the reason I know what I know is because I put a value on what I needed to do in order to become the fullness of who he is. Because what I found out is the result that I had from being in church all the years that I was in did not equal what the word of God said. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. So that I, I knew there's something was missing. Something's not right. Yes. As good as it is, is sitting and listen to the, in, in the word. And it, to me, it comes back to revelation. You have to have the breath of God on the word of God to hear the voice of God. Amen. The word of God in of itself, Satan knows really well, really Amen. well. But unless you have the freshness of his breath on it, you're not going to hear the voice. And that's what I discovered. It's whatever it takes to get into the revelatory realm to grow the value of what's inside of you that you're going to have to seek. You're going to have to find that place. So, Amen. and it's all different for everybody because they're different places. Anyway, Dr. Winnie, so powerfully wonderful to be with you once again. And I'm looking forward to keep expanding this. I hope everybody got something out of this today. I know you did because everybody always walks away from these meetings. They go, that guy just changed my thinking pattern. I go, good because it's yeah. god's because yeah, it's god's it. it's god's thinking so yeah all right dr rennie thank you again and we will see you again next week and uh looking forward to keep expanding the glory of god the mind of god and mm -hmm. the the next move of god that's going to be obviously very prevalent on this earth so yeah, thank man. you again we'll talk to you again soon and uh god bless to all of you that's been watching this we'll see you soon